There was always security on Wall Street, but before September 11th, you could take a tour bus up broad and turn right on Wall and drive all the way to South Street. Since September 11th, however, this has become a pedestrian zone. The good news is that you can stand in the middle of the intersection at Broad and Wall and admire all the buildings without fear that a cab is racing towards you. Uh, the bad news is, if you live in this zone, it's hard to get your groceries delivered, I'm assuming, and car services won't drop you at your door. Let's look at some of the buildings. So we're here at the intersection of Broad and Wall. This is the heart of the financial district. Some of the most famous buildings in the neighborhood are here. We have the New York Stock Exchange, Bankers Trust Company, JP Morgan, and Federal Hall, where you're standing. We'll come back to these buildings in a moment, but notice that in this area, it's normally swarming with people on the weekdays. On the weekends, it's relatively empty, mainly tourists and movie shoots. Behind me is Federal Hall, the nation's first capital. This, however, is not the building. This was built in 1842. The original was sold for scrap. This was built for a sub-treasury and a customs house. But the Federal Hall that was there was where Washington was inaugurated. He's standing approximately where the balcony was. This is some of the most valuable property in all of New York. And in 1873, J.P. Morgan moves here. This is headquarters from 1913. J.P. Morgan was the wealthiest man in the world, consolidating the fortunes of Vanderbilt and Carnegie and inventing the concept of the corporation. And if you look at his headquarters from 1913, you'll notice there is no name on it. If you didn't know what this building was, you had no reason being on Wall Street. This is 40 Wall Street, the Manhattan Bank building. This was the building that was racing the Chrysler for the title tallest building in the world. The buildings were being built by two men, once partners, now enemies. They used spies to learn the intended cap-off heights and watched each other's buildings rise just four miles apart. This was redesigned as it was built. Ten floors were added, as was a lantern and a flagpole, becoming the world's tallest building at 927 feet tall, two feet taller than the Chrysler's goal. However, the Chrysler was building their famous 185-foot spire inside the building, top secret. And six weeks after this one was dedicated, they raised it out of their building and secured it on top, becoming 1,000 48 feet tall, over 100 feet taller than this midget. Claim to fame though, this entire skyscraper was built in less than a year. If you go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in the American Wing, you'll see the facade of a bank. It used to be down here right next door to Federal Hall. It's at the Met as a great example of federal architecture. It was torn down in 1915 and moved up to the Met then and replaced by this building. But on this site was that bank and it was, as the sign says, the Branch Bank of the United States in 1823 and of the Assay Office in 1853. What's an Assay Office? What? What's an Assay Office? Right, an Assay Office. What is an Assay Office? What? What's an Assay? I, I can't hear you. Assay Office. I can't hear you. Assay. It's too loud. Assay. The jackhammers. Office. They're, they're too loud. It's deafening. What's an Assay Office? Oh.